What is going on guys and gals of YouTube? It's Anthony of the Primal Crew and I'm here today with a long-awaited episode of our podcast, The Gear Grind. The Gear Grind is, if you don't know already, our podcast that covers anything and everything Pokemon Go related and covers anything Pokemon related. Uh, this is going to be a doozy of an episode, so grab a snack, grab a drink, sit tight, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. First and foremost, can we just take a look at this artwork now that we've got? This is artwork that I commission that I had commissioned from an ex coworker of mine. Uh, not gonna link any of her social media or anything like that because uh, I don't know if she wants me to go that far. But her name is Cat. Cat, thank you so much for this artwork. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this artwork. Now let us get into some of the current news that is going on. Mega Evolutions. Mega Evolution is live right now in Pokemon Go. What does that mean? Well, Mega Evolutions start off in raids is one of the major parts. And actually, there is a quest that is going on right now, and we will get into more information about that. But right now, there is Mega Evolutions in raids, which actually has updated the tier rankings now for raids. There used to be tier 1s, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those raids have now been changed to tier 1, tier 3, and tier 5. Tier 5 will, I believe, still be legendary, and I'm not 100% sure if Mega Evolution has its own. I haven't personally seen one myself. Um, so now, uh, with the raids being updated, 1-star, uh, 3-star, 5-star, and Mega Raids. I'm just reading this right now from the PokemonGoLive.com uh, website. Uh, the difficulty for 1-star and 3-star will remain the same as before, but the rewards have been increased to what 2-star and 4-star raids awarded respectively. So a 1-star raid will re uh, reward you with two star uh, with Tier 2 uh, rewards, and Tier 3 will reward you with Tier 4 rewards. Now also in place, um, there is a speed bonus that will actually be also added into this. Uh, the faster you defeat a raid boss... The more rewards everyone participating in the raid will receive. Normally, it's based off of uh, if you have more of the same team, gym or uh, gym. Like if you're battling in a gym that uh, corresponds to your color. Uh, but now, uh, my apologies. The gym defender bonus is stain. Uh, so you obviously have something to compete for with that. But it doesn't matter if you're. Uh, if you're in there with mostly people that are the exact same color as your team, uh, that doesn't matter. So, for example, in a 1-star, a 3-star, and a 5-star raid, the speed bonus will reward you additional Premier Balls. So that's why I said it doesn't matter if you have more of the exact same color battling with you. Uh, in Mega Raids, the special bonus will award you additional Mega Energy. Now, what is Mega Energy? Uh, if I can get a picture on screen, it should pop up. Uh, sometime in between talking right now. Uh, mega Energy is what you will use to actually Mega Evolve uh, your Pokemon. Now, this does not permanently happen from what I'm reading here. Uh, mega Evolution happens uh, when you feed it the uh, exact amount of candy. But, here's the thing. It doesn't stay mega for long. I believe it has a four-hour window. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong about that in the comment section down below. Uh, but I just think that... I mean, it's, I, I think that actually works out in a lot of ways. Because you don't want to have, you know, so many of the exact same mega. So it kind of waters down the game. Just like when we first started out... When we had the very, very first gym tier, and everybody who was anybody that had a chancy put that chancy in the gyms, and it was like the most the most ruthless defender ever. Sorry, my raid group is talking about a I... ah, damn it, never mind. Um, I do have a raid group that I am following on Instagram or not Instagram, excuse me, on Twitter. Uh, from a lot of different trainers around the world uh, for, you know, remote raids. And I will get into remote raids very, very soon because I want to give you my thoughts on that. Um, but I do think uh, limiting a time frame on how long you can have the Mega is actually good so that way it doesn't overpower the game. 
It's like allowing legendaries to be used as gym defenders. It would be very, very... Uh, what's the word I want to use? It would be just unfair to a lot of people, especially those that are just starting out, that if every turn you went, all you see is Mega Evolution, Mega Evolution, Mega Evolution. Now, obviously, they haven't released all the Mega Evolutions. Um, I do believe they've released all the Gen 1 starter Mega Evolutions with Venusaur, Blastoise, and both Charizard Y and X, I think. I've only seen X, but I haven't seen... Uh, I haven't seen anything about why. Uh, I've also seen the Mega Evolution for Beedrill, which is actually what we're going to talk about right now. Because right now that is the current quest line that we have. And this one's not a timed quest, just in case anyone is curious. Uh, this one... Why am I getting a phone call? I don't know you. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, this is not a timed one. This is under your special tab uh, with a mega discovery. And I can actually read the text from Professor Willow right here. It says, hey there, insert your name. I think I've got an exciting uh, adventure for you. I've been working on something big. Recently, we observed a large number of Weedle appearing in the wild. Exactly what I said. I wanted to investigate the phenomenon further. After a day of research, I saw something sparkling in the tall grass near where the Weedles were gathering. It turned out to be a smooth, stone-like object with a symbol etched into it. It glowed with an energy I've never encountered before. I've seen that symbol before in documentaries about Mega Evolution that I received from my colleague in Kalos, Professor Sycamore. Sycamore is actually being referenced. That led, to, led me to believe that the object was somehow related. After digging into the documents further, I theorized that Pokemon can Mega Evolve using the energy from the object I found, which I name Mega Energy. It also occurred to me that the object I found might be related to Weedle. Now that I've caught you up with, uh, with my big discovery, let's get started on some research. We'll need a Weedle. I think that Pokemon has Mega Potential. So right now, Mega Discovery is only four tasks where you will get... Uh, I believe it is send three gifts to friends, earn a candy walking with your buddy, and catch 15 Pokemon. That rewards you with 10 Pokeballs, 10 Super Potions, and 10 Mega Energy, or 25 Mega Energy. To put things into perspective with you, uh, let me load up my game really quick. Um, it does cost a lot to Mega Evolve one of your Pokemon. And I can give you an example here. And I can actually go through some of the Pokemon that can Mega Evolve, obviously. Just so that way there's a little bit of a uh, clarity there. So, for example, for Venusaur, it's going to cost 200 Mega Energy in order to Mega Evolve uh, Venusaur. Okay. Now that... I believe is specific energy because if I go to Charizard over here, Charizard costs 200 mega uh, mega energy as well. Now Mega Candy, I'm not sure how that's working right now because Blastoise also costs 200. If I go down to Beedrill right now, Beedrill only costs 100 mega energy, uh, and Pidgeot Pidgeot does not have it up yet. Pidgeot is a Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. However, it's not in the pipeline yet. Uh, allow me to go down the list really quick. What other Pokemon over here can Mega Evolve? Alakazam can Mega Evolve. Doesn't have any of its candy up. Just going down this list over here. Gengar can technically Mega Evolve, but it does not have any kind of candy up there yet. So that tells you right now, it is in the pipeline for Pokemon to Mega Evolve. It doesn't have them all available. Yep, even Pinsir. Pinsir doesn't have it up either. Gyarados. Where are all my Gyarados? There they are. Gyarados. Nope, no Mega Candy. And that also goes for Legendaries as well. So Mewtwo will not have the Mega Evolve cap capability at the moment. That can change.
But obviously, you don't want to release everything right away because, again, that kind of waters everything down. And everybody who's anybody, whenever you battle in a gym or what have you, uh, you'll, you know, you'll just see the same exact Pokemon over and over again. So, there we go. So, anyways. So, that's my thoughts on the Mega Evolution. I think it's great that they're limiting it and that you're only going to be allowed to, like, have X amount of energy. And I think having it timed as well is something that's very good. So, yeah. I think that's, you know, my take on that. What is your take? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, so, that's pretty much the new with raids. Coming up in September for the new uh, breakthrough uh, breakout uh, Pokemon. It's actually going to be an interesting one. It's Alolan Raichu. Now, how often have you done a Tier 3 raid to try and catch an Alolan Raichu in its shiny form? Trust me, it has taken a while, and it actually took one of my alt accounts to actually catch it and transfer it over to my main. Very difficult, very aggravating. I know. But now that they're bringing it out for September, you get four free opportunities by just catching a Pokemon, uh, excuse me, by completing a research task seven days in a row, you get an opportunity at a Raichu without having to actually battle in a raid, unless your task is to win a raid. Anyways, I think it's cool. I think Alolan Raichu is a fun Pokemon to try and go after. However, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to rag on this. But a lot of people always want to look forward to, you know, like a legendary in there. You can't always get legendaries. Like, that's kind of obvious. Because if it's always legendaries, it, you know, it just kind of, you know, throws it all off. So, that's, I don't know. That's that's, that's just me. I mean, I, I love the fact that Alola Raichu is there. However, I feel like, you know... Throw something in there that's worthwhile. Like, throw throw a legendary in there. Like, it ain't got to be Mewtwo. It doesn't have to be anything major. Throw Cresselia back in there. Uh, you know, throw one of the Lake Spirits, depending upon your area. I mean, I think that would be interesting. But, I mean, that might be overkill. Go figure. That's me. Um, also, in September, there will be uh, the return of said Cresselia, Articuno, and Zapdos in raid battles. So, for those of you that haven't gotten that shiny form yet, they will be available. Obviously, now that we have remote made passes, which I will talk about more in detail again, I have my take on it. There you go. Also, uh, Victini will now be released to those of us that did not participate in GoFest. Fortunately, I did. Uh, and I think this will just be an opportunity for me to get more candy for it. So... That's great. It wasn't released right away after GoFest, and it's going to give everybody an opportunity to get the exact same mythical that we all did. Um, and then there's also new spotlight hours coming up. Uh, I don't have the full specific list for the spotlights, but I will tell you that a lot of those spotlights are going to be very, very cool. So do look forward to that, except for Spiro. I know Spiro is one of them. Fuck that bird. That's just me. Um... Let me go into something that I've wanted to talk about for a while, and that is Community Day. So, for this upcoming month in September, we had a vote. I believe it's August and September. I'm not sure. Um, but we had a vote amongst four separate Pokemon to see who you wanted as a Community Day Pokemon. And the vote went for Caterpie, Charmander, Grimer, and Porygon. What one out of those four would be the obvious choice to pick for a community day? Why do we have community days? It's to introduce a new shiny Pokemon. Out of all four of those, only one of them hasn't had a shiny. Spoiler, it's Porygon. Porygon makes the most logical choice. Spoilers, it won in the vote. However... There was always a runner-up to these votes, and that runner-up always gets put into a separate community day. Now, like I said, 
The other three have had their shinies released already. Charmander has already had a community day. It, uh, spoiler, Charmander won the second one. So Charmander Community Day Part 2 is coming. Now, for the Mega Evolution release, this makes a lot of sense. Because those people that had started out the game and hadn't had the opportunity to actually go after a shiny Charmander will now have the opportunity to get a shiny uh, Charizard with its special move. I think it's still Blast Burn. I'm not 100% sure if that's changed or not. Now, with Grimer and Caterpie, both, like I said, million time, both shiny forms have been released. Fantastic. However, and I say however a lot, it, my, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, it completely diminishes the rarity and the mystique of those shinies if they're given their own community day. How many times have we had a release where uh, you had the opportunity to catch a Grimer because its spawns were increased? Or how many times have you tried to catch a Caterpie because its spawns were increased? It is just very hard for me. I mean, I'll give, I'll use Magikarp as an example. Actually, no. Hold on. Uh, let me go to the past vote. The one that we had back for June and July was Weedle, Ghastly, Squirtle, and Sandshrew. Weedle won, obviously, getting the very the, the first community day, which again, it's it's got a, it's brand new. It would be a brand new shiny for us. Squirtle has already had its community day. Those of you that don't remember, Squirtle Squad Squirtle, where it had sunglasses, was the highlight. Sandshrew has just been you know released into the wild, and it's also had. You know, an Alolan form released as a shiny, and it's also had you know a few day or a few events where its spawns have been increased. Ghastly won the second uh, community day, which was July's community day. Now, this burned me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Last year, when I went to Chicago for uh, Go Fest Chicago, by the way, still great one of my favorite moments when it comes to Pokemon Go. At that event, I caught my very first Shiny Ghastly. Now, I had already had Shiny Gengar because Shiny Gengar was a, uh, a raid day boss that it had. And I felt great. Like, you know, Go Fest, Shiny Ghastly, that's great. And I felt special because not a lot of people can get them. Either people don't get a lot of spawns when it comes to Ghastly... Or they have a difficult time trying to get it when they have the quest, I believe it's make three great throws, which is usually a ghastly. But they gave it its own community day. And there are some people that I know that caught, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 shiny ghastlies. Practically anybody that played on those days and caught multiples, you know, now have almost an entire army, whether they're good or not. Almost an entire army of shiny, ghastly haunters or Gengars. This is what I mean by it um, diminishing, like the wor or the rarity and the like the the net the worth of that shiny. If everybody has it, there's no point in you having you know 50 of them or 40 of them inside your box. So you went through that entire community day boasting, "Yeah, I caught 43 shiny ghastlies." Okay, well, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to continuously try and re-roll until you get a lucky one? Are you just going to hold on to all of them? That's what I mean by it kind of, you know, messing with the rarity of the shiny. I, I think that just kind of, like, it just tears it down a little bit for me. A lot of people could say that about Spotlight Hours when you have, you know, Pokemon like Geodude, who is the last one. Bronzor was a few weeks, or like a couple months ago. Puchiana was a couple months ago. Suncurrent was a couple months ago. Now, here's the thing. They were only given an hour, but the shiny rate was still full odds. It's not like the shiny rate was increased or anything like that. So, that in itself 
is not even the same thing. Um, and then a lot of people that I talked to got upset about Magikarp Community Day. This one kind of falls under the same boat, but with a twist, and I'll explain. Yes, having a Community Day for Magikarp. Magikarp, for a lot of you that don't know, was one of the first shiny Pokemon that was released that did not get a Community Day. I, in my friend group, I can actually say I was the last one to actually get Shiny Magikarp. And when I finally got it, I felt great, even though I know I, I remember that day, I was sick. So, at the time, it was a super rare Shiny. Now, looking at it from a Community Day standpoint, giving it increased spawns, making it Shiny that much more easier to catch, does that diminish the rarity on the Shiny? Yes. But, with that Pokemon specifically, again, I bring up those trainers that are starting late and that are just getting back into the game or just getting into the game for the first time. Magikarp takes 400 candies to evolve. If it doesn't have a community today, if you don't have you know water by you or if you don't have spawns by you, it is going to be hell in a hurricane to try and evolve that thing into a Gyarados. Same thing would go for Whalmer, and same thing would go for Swablu. Now that I'm saying that, I feel like I'm going to jinx one of those and get in its own community day. Mark my words. So, do I think having Magikarp Community Day uh, took down the value of a shiny? Yes. Do I think it was necessary for the sense of helping out new trainers get to a Gyarados? Absolutely. Contradiction? Come at me in the comment section. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. Excuse me. Down below. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, obviously, they've talked about uh, the level cap being increased to level 50. So, eventually when that does happen, we will report more on that. Uh, well, one of my friends from the raid group actually just got injured. Uh, uh, just got invited to its first mega uh, mega raid. Very nice. Um, my thoughts on remote raids. I think this was one of the best things that they could have introduced into the game. Uh, it has given you the opportunity to, you know, raid with those that you cannot go outside and raid with right now. Or that you can only see once in a blue moon because they live halfway across the globe or halfway ac across the United States. It does open up a lot of opportunities for those of us that are trying to, you know, reach a certain amount of raids or trying to raid that, you know, that one specific legendary to get a shiny. So many different, you know, you know things that go along with it. Um, do I feel like there's a drawback to it? I do think that there is a lag when it comes to the actual invite process. I feel like there's a little bit of a... Uh, there's a little bit of a in-between where it doesn't get to the person right away. So we'll see a flash notification on our screen that we are being invited to a raid, and then it'll disappear. I think that's one thing that could be approved upon. Or it could just be, you know, those of us that are in bad areas with bad, you know, reception and connectivity. Go figure. Um, a lot of this information also I'm actually getting from my friends at LeakDuck on Instagram. Instagram.com backslash leak duck. Please do go check them out and drop a follow down below. Um, so that's my personal thought when it comes to the uh, the mega raids, the community days, and stuff like that. I do think that's, uh, you know, with the community days, just got to be a little, a little bit more... Just, I mean, just mindful of, like, what's being introduced. Obviously, if it's coming with a brand new shiny, then yes, great. Um, let's see. I know I was talking about something else. Um, I did talk about the Community Day voting process. I thought that was a little, eh. I thought that could have been held a little bit differently. Um... The fact that they've up storage so many times recently has been great. Uh, it is giving trainers a lot more opportunity to catch more, but it is also costing trainers a lot more to do. 
but that comes with the territory. If you want the space, you got to pay for it. And I have paid for it. I'm not fully maxed out, but I'm getting close. Uh, don't, don't, don't tell my family. <laughs> don't tell them. Um, I do, a lot of people are telling me that they're feeling that they're going to start introducing Generation 6 Pokemon. Generation 6 isn't going to be coming out anytime soon. We still have a lot in Generation 5 that we haven't fully been revealed yet. Hell, there's still a little bit in Gen 4 that we haven't been revealed yet. Um, there's still some mythicals in Generation 4 that we haven't gotten yet. Even though we had gotten the... So, let me know this in the comment section down below. Vatini, if you play black and white, comes up as Pokemon 000. If you look at it from any other table, it looks like it's at the very, very end of Generation 4. But it actually opens up in Generation 5. Is Victini Generation 4 or Generation 5? I think it's Generation 5, just because they have a special like event specific for it. And you can't get it in you can't get it in Sinnoh. So it just makes sense that it's considered a Generation 5 Pokemon. My throat is getting very dry. Um But like I said. There's still a lot of Pokemon that they have not revealed from Generation 4 yet, so it was a little weird that they actually did uh, release Victini. Uh, he just sent me a screenshot. I hope I can actually put this up. But it's a screenshot of him in his raid group battling a Mega Charizard X. That is actually pretty cool. But then when he's going to the catching process, it actually goes to a regular Charizard. But it does show how many mega candies you actually, or mega energy you actually can get. That's actually kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, some of the mythicals that we actually still have released over here, uh, that we haven't released, is Manaphy, Fion. I don't think anybody wants Fion because Fion cannot evolve into Manaphy. Shaman hasn't been released yet. Uh, we literally just got Rotom, but Rotom. Uh, Wash is the one that we got, and there's still about four other forms, including its regular one, that we haven't gotten yet. Uh, the Lake Trio eventually does have to move, um, and it has to, you know, start doing a little bit of shift, because we started out with Azelf. Now, granted, they still say in a very, very rare occurrence you can run into one of these Lake Legendaries, one of these Lake Trios, but, I mean, come on. You have to be, you know... So lucky that you have a horseshoe and a four-leaf clover shoved up your butt in order to seize one of these. So I feel like that's something that needs to happen very soon. And also, one of the biggest mythicals that we still haven't seen yet, Arceus. We haven't seen Arceus yet. Now, granted, I know there's going to be more Deoxys forms that are going to be coming back. We've only faced the, the regular Deoxys form to get its shiny form, so that's one thing. Uh, the re-release of Rayquaza when we got it, shiny form. But then also in Generation 5. Um, now that we have faced off against Kiram, Zekrom, and Reshiram, we still have to figure out how they're going to... Uh, well, what am I going to say? Da -da 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 -da. Well, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, with those three Pokemon, there used to be an item that you can get in black and white or black 2, white 2 that will fuse Kiram together with Zekrom or Kiram together with Reshiram to get you black Kiram, white Kiram. So, there still has to be an item for that. Also, from Generation 5, we haven't seen anything about the legendary, or excuse me, the mythicals Keldeo and Meloetta. Also, Pokemon that haven't been released yet from Generation 5, uh, such as Tynamo, Larvesta, uh, I'm just going down the line over here, uh, Cup Chew we got during Christmas last year, Stunfisk we literally just got, Mianfu, Dredagon, uh, Ponyard I believe, I haven't seen Ponyard yet, I could be wrong, uh, Bufalant is only over in certain areas, Volibee, I haven't seen anything about Vullaby yet. Uh, Frillish and Jellicent. I haven't seen anything about those. Uh, Deerling. Sawsbuck. is another one that we haven't seen anything about yet. Zorua and Zoroark. Which will probably get its own like research to actually get. Sandile to the Crocodile line. 
which I cannot wait to actually get myself. Uh, Sigalith, I believe, has already been released. Uh, the Fossils, Tortuga, and Archon have already been released. Uh, Amuna and Musharna. Did they already release those? I have no idea. That's one that I don't remember off the top of my noggin. Uh, I think that's pretty much it from Generation 4 that they have, or excuse me, Generation 5 that they haven't released. Generation 4, I believe all general Pokemon have been released for the most part. As I'm looking down the list, uh, Mantike has already been released. That was an egg eons ago. Uh, Spear Tomb we got in a special event also about a year or so ago. And all the other evolutions. So most of Generation 4 has already been released, but we do still have a small chunk of Generation 5 that we haven't seen yet. So are we going to see Generation 6 anytime soon? Probably not. But, you know, that Pokemon has changed a lot of things on us where they gave us Generation 3 when we weren't even fully done with seeing Generation 2 yet. And vice versa. So, there's that. And probably the Monkey Continental Shift has to happen. Uh, because we've had the same Water Monkey for so long over here on the West Coast. We need the others. Um... Let's see, did I name? Yes, Azora, Zoroark. Uh, after Amoongus comes the Frillish line. Uh, if they have released, released Sigalith, I haven't seen it yet. And it might just be something over overseas, maybe. <coughs> My throat is dry. Um, that's most of the news that I can dig up that I've had notes about. Um, anybody in the comment section that can let me know if they've actually, if they've actually consistently put stickers on any of the gifts that they give out, because I have not, I can say wholeheartedly, I have not, I'll do it for a few people, but I'm not going to do it constantly because I always forget. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, what do you guys think about the stickers? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I'm looking forward to a lot of the changes that are going to be coming up here in September. A lot of the returning legendaries, the researches, the spotlight hours, how they're going to introduce certain things. Heat Ran right now has been very, very kind to me. Uh, if I can actually uh, access my game at a moment. Uh I have done numerous Heat Ran raids, and I have come across three total, with one of them at a 96% with the stats 15, 15, 13. 13 being in HP, but attack and defense both at 15, and that bad boy has been maxed out. So, big boy. Uh, previous uh, Mythicals and Legendaries. Genesect, I was able to snag two. Deoxys, I was able to snag two. And then Rayquaza, I was able to snag about three of them. So, a lot of raids, a lot of raid passes, a lot of money. But all worth it. Because I love this game. I love the evolution of it. I haven't grown tired of it yet. Uh, <clears throat> nor do I think I ever will. A lot of people bag on me for spending as much money as I do on this game. But it's not like... You know, any of these other app games that you, like, spend money on and never go back and play them. I play this game consistently every day. If not just for a little bit, but just to, you know, get certain stats and certain bonuses up. Yeah, I'll play it. I'm not going to stop playing anytime soon. Um, if you have been a consistent player, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know how much, you know, how many Pokemon you've caught, how many spaps you've spun, and stuff like that. I know some people uh, that won't be named that uh, that will take, you know, a few months off. Which, if you've got a lot going on in your life and, and you absolutely can't open up the app, then so be it. Like, you have to take care of things in your life. And then there are people that, you know, live and work downtown that somehow jump in and become more political about everything. And then all of a sudden they try and turn around and say that, oh, like, look at what I got. Look at this, you know, 
300th shiny Rayquaza that I've gotten from a raid. But yet, I'm never going to trade it to someone unless they have something I absolutely want. I'm not going to help other people. Fuck you. Don't do that. Don't play this game just so that way you can be a monopoly and say, well, I have all this. You don't have anything I want. You can't have it. It's fucked up. And you guys, most of you that have heard these rants before know who exactly I'm talking about. You know 100% who I'm talking about. Starts with a P, ends with a, <laughs> ends with a twan. Let's just go like that. All right. And if he ever listens to this, you know, come find me. Come find me on Facebook. Come find me on Instagram. Confront me about it because you burned me the wrong way, dude. You pissed me off. And now I really don't care what you say to me. So there you have it. That's how I feel about him. Uh, He's, oh, that's actually something I wanted to cover. This will be the last thing I cover. I know this has been going for almost 35 minutes. But the gentleman that I'm speaking of specifically, um, has been afforded opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for a lot of things. Um, so on something recent that he had actually, uh, let's just put it this way. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? I don't need to name my name. Uh, he literally, if you guys don't know the backstory, Started out YouTuber, started doing pack openings, wanted to get into Pokemon Go. Did not start recording Pokemon Go until he was almost level 40 already. Didn't start from the bottom and work his way up like how Mystic 7 did. Mystic 7, I give a lot of credit to him. He didn't start out as a Pokemon Go YouTuber. He started out doing a lot of like other like gaming platforms and games. A lot of credit to him uh, with everything that he does. Now, however... Uh, this specific one ran into him during one of the very first Mewtwo raids, uh, and, you know, wanted advice. I gave him advice. We hung out a few times every time I would go into the city. We added, we added friend capabilities when we could, and, you know, just went on from there. There was a time where I had a friend of mine who actually went to a gaming convention in Washington. I feel like I have... I know I've said this before, but I'm going in as far in depth as I can. Um, had Went to a gaming event in Washington. She played my account. She got me a whole bunch of rare Pokemon known as Unknown. A lot of you should know what that is if you're listening to a Pokemon podcast. And... Like, I was logged out of the account for, like, over a couple days. She just played it. She caught as many as she could. She brought them back. I knew he was missing one of them. And I said, hey... Like, I've got this Pokemon here that my friend caught over in, you know, Washington. His exact words were to me, like, oh, I don't catch Pokemon that weren't caught by you. But it's, you know, in the same token, I wasn't playing the account, yes, but it's also not like I was playing it from home and I had changed my location to play over in Washington. I didn't do that. Very, very big contradiction coming from a guy that was coming to a Mewtwo raid to play somebody else's account. That could be the exact same kind of situation you're explaining to me, buddy. He had posted back in uh, 2018. I've been quiet on this issue, but I'm speaking out now. Since trading came out, spoofers have come out of the shadows and SF offering rare Pokemon. My response, sorry, I'm not interested in Pokemon that were caught at your house. Now that we have remote raids, how can you really say anything, um, one, uh, somebody had commented on it saying, I personally have always appreciated spoofers, uh, especially since, uh, me and his, the hubs, her husband have always raided just the two of us. So it made raiding easier for us. We always got mad when they're, <laughs> when people aren't spoofing and that's what makes the game fun and unique. He apologized to her. Sorry, not going to say the person's name. But spoofers won't be around too much longer. It's just a matter of time before Niantic finds a way to turn off the spoof switch. I don't care how much they help with raiding. I'd rather raid with people who are in person. Says the guy that would record nobody around him after legendary, legendary, after legendary. And there would be nobody around him, but there would be almost 20 people max in every raid group that he went into. Don't sit there and tell me 
that you don't care and you don't you would rather uh, raid with people around you when there's no one around you and those 20 people helped you defeat a Rayquaza that turned out to be shiny. If that's the case, delete all your fucking shinies. Because honestly, you're a giant fucking hypocrite. Also, uh, something that came up when uh, the Pokemon YouTubers, uh, specifically that I'm looking at here, uh, Reversal, Yamada-san, Zoe Two Dots, Pokemon Master Holly, uh, JT Gilly, Mystic Seven, Trainer Tips, and I believe that's Spide. I don't know who the last one is. Um, they all came to San Francisco for one of the community days. I believe it was Bulbasaur Community Day. Um, and it was like it literally was posted the Pogo's uh, the Pogo Tube Squares. Detective Pikachu was put in the middle, and here he comes as a fucking mark, saying that he's the lost Pogo Tube Square. Like, bro, just because you ran into them and you followed them around like a mindless, you know, fucking puppy dog like everybody else, you know, don't call yourself, like, on their level. Like, I'm not saying that you can't eventually get up to there, but for Mystic7, who has over a million subscribers, uh, JT Gilly, who's over a hundred, like, 120,000, I believe. Uh, Trainer Tips, who's almost at a million. Zoe Two Dots, who's over a hundred thousand. Pokemon Master Holly, who's over a hundred thousand. Reversal, who's over a couple hundred thousand. Like, <clears throat> don't put yourself in that same category and say, like, oh, I'm the lost Pogo Tube Square. Like, I was able to free up my schedule so I can hang out with people that, you know, probably really don't give a shit about me. And this is an attack on anything about, like, you know, Color Creed or anything else. It's about character. Okay, so don't get that twisted. Like, don't put yourself in that same category if you haven't, you know... If you're not even close to that level. You're at 2,000. You have a small following. And I can actually confirm right now if I go to this specific person's channel. Uh, da, 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 da. My phone is taking its time to load. It has been... Almost nine months since the last time this specific Poketuber has uh, has released any kind of footage. It was last year. And don't, don't give me this whole pandemic thing. Alright? Because, you know, not to put anybody on blast, but really, honestly, I don't give a damn. He's not working right now. His job isn't considered essential. So, like, his place can't be open. So... You're at home, you're doing your thing there, you're telling me you can't record anything? You can't record pack openings and go back to that? You can't play Pokemon Go from your house? We see you walking around all the time and if you go to his Instagram. And you're telling me you can't get footage out? Come on, don't, give, don't do that. And then, recently, he's also become very political. He has come very, you know... Very high and mighty about everything politics and everything, you know, BLM and all that other kind of stuff. I'm not going into details about that. So, another post from his about a month or so ago. That extra $600 a week in unemployment benefits kept the bills paid and put uh, food on the table. Now that it's gone, we are on thin ice. Congress, please do something. Why don't you go find an essential job? Why don't you record every day to see if you can actually get, you know, revenue from YouTube? Go do something. Don't rely on the Congress or the government that you talk so much shit about. Okay? Do I agree? Do I agree with any of the things that you say? Yeah, I think our president's a piece of shit. And if he ever hears this, you know you're a piece of shit, dude. Most of America thinks you are, except for, you know, certain people in the South. But... Don't, don't mooch on, you know, benefits and stuff like that. And then, oh, the extra is gone. Well, Congress, give me more money. Give me more handouts. For what? What are you actually spending this money on? I mean, you bought yourself, like, you fixed up your computer or you bought a brand new one. Okay? That's really, you know, food on your table and stuff like that. 
And then probably the one thing that upset me the most about him is that he was recently selling on eBay, and he posted about it, rare cards. Specifically, genera- or the first generation Charizard from Base Set. Base Set 2 Charizard, and a couple other cards. Some of these cards were given to him by, you know, a co-worker or by one of his managers. Or he may have had them. Why sell those? Like, those are nostalgia, like, personified. Don't sell a Charizard and, like, you know, get, like, two or three hundred dollars for it. Boast about it. And then call yourself a Pokemon collector. If you're going to sell, like, one of the rarest cards. If you If you absolutely need the money, that's fine. I don't think you do. And that's just, again, my opinion. If you know who I'm talking about, call me out on it. I don't give a damn. I'm willing. You know, I'm willing to you know argue with anybody in the in the comment section. It just it just burns me that again somebody that's looking in a sense for a handout is looking to you know get free money from the government even though those benefits are already gone. Go find an actual job, and if you're that low on money, then I guess you know sell your collection, but then don't. You know, don't whine and cry about it later saying I shouldn't have sold it, I should have just kept it. Don't do that. Because you had every opportunity not to sell it. But you decided to. So that's on you. I should be done ranting. I know this episode's almost an hour long. So I'm going to let it go there. Anything that I have talked about, please let me know in the comment section down below. Your thoughts, your feelings, your counter-arguments, your actual arguments. Please, bring it. I would love to, you know, chat with everybody. But I thank you all for coming out and listening to today's podcast. If you did enjoy it, please make sure that you drop a like down below. Comment about anything that we've talked about. And above all else, do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more great TCG Let's Play and other random videos. With that, I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you all so much for coming out and checking out today's podcast. I have been Anthony. You all have been the best part of the Primal Crew. And I will catch you guys next time. And as always, thank you all for your support. Take it easy and grind on.